Welcome back. Uh, before the break, I was talking to my distinguished guest today, Dr. Najma Kabir, about her work that has taken her to so many po uh, countries in the world. See, During her travels, uh, she took pictures and she has written about this. So could we have focus on uh, this book, please? Control room? Yep. And also the back of this, please. Uh, Dr. Najma, when was and where was this t picture taken? I, uh, yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's my hobby. Uh -huh. One of the hobbies that I take actually photographs. I've been taking photographs for a long time. So over the years I've been traveling. So that particular trip was in India, in mm -hmm. Dhanbad, mm -hmm. in, uh, you know, close to Calcutta. Uh, and it was in a cave, 6,000 feet kind of but in a coal, coal mine. Coal mine. Mm -hmm. And I was, I think, there were very few women actually went to that coal mine. Mm -hmm. And they allowed me, so I went there. And that picture was taken within like very you know, short period of time because they were not even allowing photographers to go During there. During those days you were working with lepra? I was working with well, lepra. What, what was the work of lepra? The leprosy, leprosy. tuberculosis and other neglected diseases. Mm -hmm. And I was really surprised that in these days we still have leprosy you know, patient. Mm -hmm. And it's quite strange because leprosy is curable. It's mm -hmm. a bacterial disease, but because of the stigma, they actually live in a very you know, separate and in isolation. But I think going there and, you know, seeing that the organization is working fantastic work, they identified those patients and giving those kind of treatment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And also not only those individual patients, they look into the family other members mm -hmm. so that they can actually control leprosy. Mm -hmm. So I think Tata Company was actually a partner organization of that, you know, organization. And this is where uh, they were helping. They gave us the space and we just took the opportunity to visit their coal mine because it was very close. Right. Was Mother Teresa also involved on this project? Yes, not on that one particularly, but mm -hmm. then she has actually worked with mm -hmm. leprosy patients earlier. Could we have a focus on uh, another book, please? Uh, this is uh, the cookery book that you have uh, written. <laughs> and uh, mm -hmm. thank you. This is again, you know, uh, because of, I've got two daughters, mm -hmm. one is married, and when after her marriage, she used to call me or write emails sending her recipes of her favorite dishes. Mm -hmm. And I used to do that, but then I, because I was taking photographs, every time I cook something special, I was taking photographs, and I had that collection, I thought. This, this, this is before the Facebook uh, yes, mania. Yes, <laughs> yes. And I thought that I better actually, you know, collect those recipes and you know keep them in a book so when i'm not here they can still actually look for their favorite right, foods right. and uh, so we don't uh, it's not like a typical recipe book mm -hmm. but it has got enough information that they can actually later on make samosas or shingaras and their mm -hmm. other favorite dishes so that's more kind of personal but of course uh, i have actually shared that with my friends and other colleagues who appreciate my cooking when they visited me. So I've been giving them more kind of as gifts. Right. So um, I'm planning to write my another book, which is uh, might be like with some photographs, but it's more about thinking of, you know, building confidence of young people. And that's, I mm -hmm. hope to get it mm -hmm. by end of this year. Uh, somewhere you have written that uh, the UK has helped 11 million children get an education in the last five years, training 177,000 teachers, building classrooms, and ensuring the poorest girls and boys have a school bursaries and textbooks. Uh, this work will continue with a commitment to help 11 million girls and boys gain an education by 2020. Is this part of uh, Christian aid or is this part of uh, UK's development work or? It's mostly UK's development work, but most of the organization I'd I worked with, they had mm -hmm. either health program or education. Mm -hmm. In my recent they're, organization. They're all part of this program. Yes, I think there's like uh, 
the global agenda is to mm -hmm. improve the education of girl child. Yeah. Uh, so the each and every organization sometimes they focus on education. Why is this gender specific girl child? Girl child because if you look into the situation, uh, girls situation is sub you know to us kind of you know men mm -hmm. or boys mm -hmm. and I think there's a you need to have the drive to bring them like in the equal position then so we can actually call it's a focus or girls it's more kind of women development or focusing just to bring them kind of up to that level and I think the importance is also with girls education again you know as I was mentioning it's not only that individual girl is going to learn something but actually it helps with the future generation because of their you know making the decision and when to have children and how to you know bring up you know their children and i think when i talk to the women and if you think that what is an empowerment you know for a kind of lady in rural areas it's not the mobility they want to have some income because mm -hmm. of the education they can actually earn money through entrepreneurship or job mm -hmm. And because of the income, they can actually make decision to send their children to school. They can actually buy medicine for their children. Right. Those kind of decision is going to help them to kind of, you know, have a quality of life and also eventually contribute to the national, you know, agenda. But some of these like uh, BRAC, uh, which is the world's largest NGO, mm -hmm. uh, well, that's what it's branded as, uh, they are doing uh, such work, uh, uh, particularly with their microfinance, uh, mm -hmm. and they are empowering uh, women to have a say in that. Uh, but uh, when people talk of empowerment of women, see, I see that uh, uh, we have a, a prime minister, a lady prime minister. Uh, the first minister from Scotland is a lady. Uh, Angela Merkel, mm -hmm. uh, the Chancellor of West, West Germany, or Germany now, uh, is the is is a, is a lady, and, and then we in back in Bangladesh, uh, we have uh, Prime Minister and and uh, ministers and parliamentary speaker, and mm -hmm. uh, in India also we have had uh, Prime Minister. Uh, so there is a trend of. Uh, uh, I do not know whether it is a windfall, whether it is dynastic, or, or it is it is really it reflects a real social development, but uh, it is happening. Mm -hmm. And don't you think that this is enough to this should trickle down to the masses and the the girl child should benefit from that? I think it's very good that it's happening, but I think it we should not just kind of stop there just having like you know our prime minister kind of being a woman and i think there are like people out there in the remote areas yeah. who are not able to get the basic education that's the reality and the difference is huge so even like you know the girls children are going to school the enrollment figure has gone really up almost like 90 percent girls are actually enrolling in school but are they graduating but they are not graduating and they are dropping out and that's why the challenge is still there so i think so we have to work in both ways we have to encourage we have to make sure that we don't only encourage the parents to send their girl children yeah. you know to school but also giving them assurance that the safety they learn kind of without any fear and I think this is where I think a lot of people are dropping from the school because of just going to the school. The violence in and around school is huge. And not only in kind of Bangladesh, it's in other Asian everywhere. countries, everywhere. in Africa. Uh, so I think we need to kind of tackle those. So ensuring that people, girls, children, at least they are, you know, graduating from the primary school to the secondary school and to the university and also learning those skills not mm -hmm. just going to the school and I think you need to improve the quality of the education because if they don't learn if they don't learn those skills they can't do any business or job and being the kind of prime minister even so right. I think I mean, that's I what mean, we have to do that is this is uh, we have uh, as I said uh, dynastic uh, mm -hmm. reasons are there that some women come up uh, and whether this will continue I do not know uh, if, if uh, but uh, we would like it to continue we would like it to not the dynastic uh, traditions but uh, women to come up and and 
share the responsibilities. It's not just a man's world, but it's, it's also a women's world. They are, they are 50 percent, sometimes more than 50 percent yeah. of the population in any country. But the problem remains at a school level, at primary school mm. level particularly, that whether the girls will go to a school, whether they find, as you said, a safe environment to learn, mm -hmm. and then traveling from home to a school mm -hmm. and coming back. This is not just specific to Asian countries only. Uh, I have spent a, a lot of time uh, teaching at a university in Saudi Arabia. Uh, girls, the school, they at, seem to attract young boys, see. Mm. Uh, they, they want to uh, f hang around there at the time for uh, uh, break or, or, or when the school is, uh, buses are going, <laughs> uh, taking the girls away from the school or bring them. They, they, there's always some sort of problem, as he said, and this has to be checked. Yeah. And this has to be checked through the social pressure yes. and through the force of law. Yeah. Unfortunately, in some of the Asian countries, this apparently, I mean, we're sitting far away, we feel that good, good work is not being done towards uh, in this Yeah. Uh, I totally agree. I mean, it's the, you know, when we talk about women development, it's not just taking the women, educate and aware them. I think we need to really yeah, include them. Yeah, if you leave them, them there, they, where yeah. do they go from there. Yeah, so the, you have to bring the men, you have to bring the boys and start from the very early days how to respect a woman. I mean, it's when the girl is, you know, going to school or the university, rather changing their dress code, which yeah. recently I heard in Bangladesh, you have to really teach the other, you know, guy student that how to respect your peer or your friend, your classmates. I think if the respect is not there, then you cannot actually change anything there. So it's not working only with the girls, but at the same time working True. with boys or men, making them aware because they are part of the whole development. You even in a kind of you know family, I think both contribute. You maybe the husband is going outside and you know doing work, you know external work, yeah. but the. Um, the, the women actually, you know, sitting, you know, at home, they, they, working they, the other, you know, house do, chores. They do, they do much more work yes. than the man. So I yeah. think that whole equality needs to be understood. And I think this is why maybe the whole mindset needs to be kind of changed. The attitude needs think, to be changed. Uh, our, has our attitude changed over the last 50 years? I think it's changing. I mean, if you consider the garment industry in our right. country, you know, a yeah. lot of young girls are, you know, moving from rural to urban areas. Right. And they're working. There are ch challenges there. They, I mean, their health situation, their accommodation. But I think it has changed a lot because you won't actually see those girls in, like, flocks in Dhaka City 20 years ago. It's a huge difference, and not everybody is really teasing them on the road. Right. So I think the change is there because the more women are empowered and doing the job and show that they can actually do it, yeah. and I think people will start also accepting. So it needs kind of, you know, both ways we have to encourage to make the women also kind of stronger and believe in themselves that they can do it. But at the same time also for the men to kind of understand and respect. I think only then we can have the true gender equality. Okay. Are, are there agencies working on the other side of the fence? I mean, <laughs> providing the impetus to men that to behave yeah. in a particular way. Yeah, definitely. I think uh, even with Plan International work, even though they're focusing on girl child mm -hmm. or young adolescent girls, right. at the same time, we have a lot of projects with masculinity. And right. this is why you actually raise the awareness and working with the young, you know, uh, young group of people, giving them also the edu not only education, but other skills, the entrepreneurship. Right. When they're actually busy in doing that, I think they are also kind of distract from the negative things. And you actually bring them in the mainstream, help them to you know, find out a uh, you know, skill development work. So that's how I think like this organization, many other organizations also, even the focus is their girl child, but at the same time they are bringing in the boys and men. Okay, the madam, program. we have to take a break. Sure. Uh, don't go away, we'll be back soon after this.